hooked on Moon Knight or always flicking through comics? Have you seen every Marvel movie or know the Batman villains off by heart? Well, it might be time to stop reading about the heroes and become one. I've got a list of six brilliant superhero RPGs where you get to don the cape and fight the bad guys. Or the good guys, I'm not judging your fun. In these games, you can create complex characters that have every power you've ever dreamed of, from charming animals to turning invisible. You can be inspired by legends from Medusa to King Arthur. Or you can play alone and fight evil, no matter how many times it knocks you down. So, whether you're a Marvel fan, DC lover, into the indies, or just want some cool powers, there's a game for you. I'm Maddie from Dicebreaker, and these are six great superhero RPGs. First up is Mutants and Masterminds. This is all about playing your classic comic book hero. Amazing powers, scheming villains, and a never-ending fight of good versus evil. The RPG spans every era of supers, from the tights-clad Golden Age to the brooding Iron Age, or even a manga age to let you live out your magical girl fantasies. Because let's be honest, Sailor Moon is the true hero of our time. It means there's no limit on the style of game you can enjoy with this system, just make sure the group all agrees, mainly so one person doesn't turn up as modern-day Daredevil and another as Adam West's Batman. Although that could be kind of fun. What makes Mutants and Masterminds really stand out is the character creation. There is basically no limit. You can create any superhero imaginable. Run faster than light, summon poisonous plants from the earth, sprout wings and soar. It uses a really flexible point-by system split over powers and abilities to craft your unique hero. You can also flavour any of the powers or abilities however you like, so no two characters will ever feel the same, even if you start with similar abilities. Say your hero does ranged damage. That could look like anything from your run-of-the-mill gun to laser eye beams. So far, I've created a super speedy roller derby girl who got her powers from aliens, as well as an anti-hero who uses an array of gadgets based on sweets, such as bubblegum bombs. Mutants and Masterminds really lets you get creative. So, once you've crafted your perfect character, you throw them into action. M&M is based on an open source D20 system, so the rules will feel familiar to anyone used to other TTRPGs, especially D&D. You roll a D20 and add modifiers when trying to do something tricky or during combat, and either succeed or fail by various degrees, depending on whether you roll above or below the difficulty class. So one person is the game master who referees these rules and plays the villains, while the rest of the players are heroes. When playing a session of Mutants and Masterminds is meant to feel like an issue of a comic or an episode of a show. You play through related scenes, either starting and finishing action in one session with a Villain of the Week style game, or developing an ongoing story as you solve a mystery or build up to one main evildoer. Maybe your team can actually stop Thanos this time around. You'll want to play Mutants and Masterminds if you're looking for flexible character creation and settings, as well as a familiar D20 system and a ton of content to draw from online. What if superheroes got their powers from legendary figures throughout time? From ancient gods, from dark fairy tales, from whispered urban legends? That is the basis of City of Mist, a superhero RPG where your powers come from people, places and things from stories. From legend, folklore, literary work, religious tales, real world events. To become superpowered, a mythoi, one of these stories, links with a person and grants abilities related to their original history. So someone linked to Robin Hood will be good with a bow and great at tricking rich people. And maybe even has a foxtail if you're going for that version. Where as a hero related to a selkie could transform into a seal, where they slip into water and maybe withstand cold or have a taste for fish. 
However, despite these powerful links, you're still a normal person and must balance that burgeoning power with your everyday life. Aspects from both your powerful mythos side and mundane logos side evolve throughout the game. You may start grounded in reality with just the hint of a folk tale flowing into your life, or perhaps you've been towing this line for a while and are used to your legend. Maybe you've just moved to the city and powers of Alice in Wonderland are creeping in. A strange cat is always hanging around and the other day you swear you saw him smile. Or perhaps you're an established weatherman whose connection to the Egyptian god Ra means you never predict rain when there's really sun. No one in the business does it like you. In a city full of people though, how does no one notice the tentacles sprouting from the earth as someone linked to Cthulhu stops a bus in its tracks? Or how flowers bloom from the concrete where a hero of Demeter walks? Well, that's the mist, a mysterious veil that covers up reality. So when a person linked to a dragon breathes fire, regular people just see a gas explosion. Or whenever Alice sees a grinning cat in a tree, her loved ones always seem to be looking in the other direction. The mist doesn't alter reality, but it does make sure regular people don't notice a lot of the weird occurrences. So you've got characters balancing two lives, mysterious mist that covers their tracks, what about the gameplay? City of Mist works like other standard TTRPGs with a game master, or in this case, a master of ceremonies, and a group of players. It also uses a D6 system to determine the outcome of roles when you try to do something particularly daring or tricky. Mostly, it's pretty rules light and leans into role playing over crunchy mechanics. It's about solving mysteries, telling stories, and players working together to do it. So you'll want to play City of Mist if you like the idea of balancing an ordinary life with legendary powers, or of playing with noir themes, and embodying your favourite stories and characters from throughout time. Between the 1930s and 1950s, comic books were in their golden age. Superman was flying through the air and Captain America always helped someone in need. But black heroes basically didn't feature in these stories, and if they did, they were rarely featured well. Grandma's Hand asks what if there were black heroes during this time, but they were never celebrated in the same way because of the media's reluctance to cover these stories and the oppression of police and politicians. This RPG is a chance to tell those stories, the heroics, the daring deeds, the way they lift up the oppressed. You become black heroes in this golden age, from hard-boiled detectives with excellent swordmanship to war veterans with super speed. You'll be fighting classic comic villains such as Nazis and mad scientists, as well as the police who terrorise black communities and politicians enforcing systemic oppression. Grandma's Hand blends science fantasy with a dark, gritty feel as you fight for real justice in a sometimes awe-inspiring, sometimes terrifying world. As heroes, you can make a difference though. A grandma's hand is one that nurtures, protects, and encourages. That's your role as you play these stories and solve the mysteries. To play, you have a game master to run the sessions, refereeing rules, and playing NPCs, while the rest of the group are the heroes. You'll use D6 dice pools, and your roles determine if you succeed, succeed with a complication, or fail your action and get a consequence. You won't be rolling for every action though, only to try things that seem a little risky. This rules light feel also carries on into character creation where your hero is made up of three basic attributes, which are how you tackle any situation. You could use force, which is about brute strength and power, flow, which is your speed and agility, or focus, which is about brains, not brawn. From there, you have your character things like health, their ends, which are how you activate your powers, and then what your powers actually are, such as flying or super speed. 
you usually have two to three of these to keep things balanced. You can pick what you want, but there are some really fun examples in the book too, such as Fireforge, where you hurl flaming hammers, or Bubble, which surrounds you with a healing barrier. You can't just cast powers as many times as you like though. As mentioned, your ends are how you activate your Fireforge or Teleport, and these are actually a limited resource. They are renewable though, especially through combat, so you can replenish that spent energy, but it does keep things interesting as you avoid exhausting your hero. You should play this any nominated RPG if you want thrilling combat set in the golden age of comics and to tell moving, meaningful stories of heroes who have been largely neglected in the space before. When you picture playing a superhero, are you picturing the Teen Titans, Runaways, or being Xavier's school for gifted youngsters? Well, I have just the game for you. Masks, A New Generation is all about being supers taking their first steps into the world of being a hero. It's about telling a coming of age story with powers and all the messy, fun, memorable stuff that comes with. You play as a team of teens with powers where dealing with an attacking dinosaur is just as important as finding a date for prom. Because we all remember being that age and knowing how important every little detail of your life felt. Imagine saving the city and then realizing your hair looks terrible in the press pictures. Disaster. Okay, it doesn't have to be that melodramatic, but feelings are equally as important as fights in masks. Like most good superhero stories, it's set in a major bustling city, Halcyon. This is a place familiar with superheroes and therefore used to the villains and monsters that usually come along with that. Halcyon is also the greatest city in the world, which basically boils down to it has everything you could want for a game. So while it is an established place, it's equally a playground for you to get creative with. You can decide if the mayor is an ex-superhero or hates them, if it's known for its incredible museums or bustling financial district. You can bring in whatever you need to make it a fun game. Maybe add an amusement park, a chain of restaurants, put it on the coast in the mountains. Halcyon is very much a jumping off point. Which is a sentiment that's true throughout Masks. Your character will be one of 10 core types called playbooks, but they're basically just the skeleton on which to build your own hero. They're also more archetypes rather than classes. Together, they build up an interesting and dynamic set of individuals who all have their own issues to face. For example, the beacon, they glue the group together, whereas the protege is beholden to their relationship with a mentor, and the bull has to balance being seen as a weapon with their deeper emotions. It's a really fun way of looking at characters as people rather than mere skill sets. So while each playbook does have added benefits for fights, they also have drives to pick, like pulling off a ridiculous stunt, leading the team successfully, and even kissing a teammate. They are teens after all. Of course, you do have super cool powers to go alongside it. Each playbook has a range of abilities, but they're left vague enough to flavor however you want. One hero might have radical shape-shifting, but that could be anything from turning into a lion to a fiery inferno. So no two heroes will feel the same in a game, even if they look similar on paper because we all remember how important feeling like an individual is when you're a teen. So you'll want to play Masks A New Generation if you want to be teen heroes battling angst as much as aliens, to be part of a growing, evolving team, and to live out a modern hero fantasy. Try and tell me you don't want to battle a T-Rex while crowned as prom queen.
If you have a very clear picture on the kind of hero you want to be, and they're one who wouldn't look out of place in the Avengers, there's an obvious choice for you. The Marvel Multiverse role-playing game. This is Marvel Comics giving you free reign to have fun in their universe, providing stats for all your favourite heroes and villains, and even a chance to make your own super to fight alongside the likes of Spider-Man and Wolverine. The rogues gallery is going to be as full as the list of heroes too, so you can finally answer your biggest comic questions or play out fun scenarios about what it would look like to see Rocket Raccoon take on Hydra or see how Wolverine and Storm would do against Thanos. I will start out by saying though that this game is still only in its playtest phase, so we don't have the final verdict. But I couldn't speak about superhero RPGs without pointing Marvel fans in this direction. Plus, if you play now, you can give feedback for the final version of the game coming in 2023. The playtest gives you enough to get started with. There's a ton of powers you can already pick from, such as Peter's favourite spider sense or Captain's shield bearer and more to make your own hero. There's also a selection of popular Marvel faces from Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and X-Men. It's certainly not everyone in the MCU and beyond, but why not team up Black Panther and Groot for a few sessions for now to try out the system? There's even a ready-made adventure to take your heroes through as they battle the deadly Hydra. When looking at characters, Marvel Multiverse is definitely on the crunchier side of games on this list, so be prepared for a decent amount of numbers and tables to refer to. Although, while a lot of it looks kind of intimidating, the numbers are mostly just references for creating your hero and deciding on outcomes when playing, such as how far the wasp can reach when she's super tiny, or the damage of a pistol. But as I mentioned, there are a few ready-made heroes you can jump into playing and save the maths for another day. The last thing to note is the 616 system Marvel Multiverse uses. This is how you determine the outcome of dangerous or potentially risky actions and involves rolling two regular d6 and one special d6. If you get a 1 on the special d6 and a 2 or more on the others, it makes a fantastic roll. The narrator or game master determines something special that happens beyond just succeeding. Otherwise, you're just adding up the results of the dice in your character's modifiers like most classic RPGs. Basically, it's just an excuse to buy more dice. So, you'll want to play the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game if you love the MCU and comics. If you want to play as your favourite hero and face off against iconic villains in an already established universe. My plan? I'm going to relive Spider-Man 3 my dance moves are ready. And last, but very much not least, we have Anyone Can Wear The Mask. Mechanically, this is the most unique game on this list, as you don't have a game master and a bunch of players being heroes. Instead, you collaborate on one specific story. One person plays the hero, our super person with amazing powers set on doing good. Another plays the city. This means they take on the role of the general populace, other heroes, and describe some of the places. Lastly, one person is the villain. They lurk in the shadows, watching the hero's failures, getting ready to cause chaos and use their dastardly powers for evil. Look, a hero needs a villain, otherwise they'd be put out of business, so you can't be mad at me for poisoning the water supply once again. So, with these roles, Anyone Can Wear The Mask is a game for one, two, three players. In a full game, each person takes on a role. For two, one is the hero and the other doubles up as villain and city, but you can also tackle the whole thing alone. In the Fortress of Solitude mode, you take on all of the roles and journal your experience as the story plays out. Eyeliner and cape optional for that one. The reason anyone can wear the mask has this flexibility of players is due to the way it emphasises emergent ideas rather than pre-planned adventure. 
everyone at the table can sit down for the very first time and dive into playing, letting the world, story, and characters unfold organically as and when they come up. You do this through a deck of cards. They determine your story and you just fill in the blanks. For example, you pulled the jack of clubs. You all decided that clubs represent the docks in the city. But a jack also means you've gone somewhere peaceful. Maybe the hero goes here to unwind. Clubs also means that you find a comrade who needs some help at your location. The players describe what's happening as this comes up. Perhaps unwinding with some fishing at the docks, their old friend the crustacean emerges from the water and asks for help dealing with all of the pollution in the ocean. It's a freeing style of play and means no one has to commit to being the GM with all of the answers. Anyone can wear the mask is very much a collaborative experience at every point, with each person contributing. It's also very much a with great power comes great responsibility game. By which I mean, being a hero isn't easy. You can't save everyone's lives. Businesses and monuments will be destroyed in your struggle. But the point of being a hero is to spit out that tooth that just got knocked, get back up, and do the right thing, no matter how hard it may seem. Failure is very much a mechanic and anyone can wear the mask. The villain keeps track of when the hero gets it wrong by people dying or the city being destroyed. Then, at the final showdown, they list them all to shake the hero. So it is the perfect role for anyone who loves to monologue and thinks the more evil, the better. So, you'll want to play Anyone Can Wear The Mask if you're looking to play on your own or in a bit of a smaller group. If you want a story where heroes don't always get it right, but they do always keep on trying. And if no one wants to be the GM, but you still want to tell incredible stories. So, who's your first hero going to be? And do you have any other superhero RPG recommendations? Let us know in the comments. If you want to see more on RPGs and tabletop games in general, make sure to subscribe to the Dice Breaker channel. You can also hit the notification bell to make sure you never miss new content. And you'll also be notified for things such as our weekly live streams, where you get to see us play some of the games we love. You can also hit the join button to become a member and get exclusive videos from the Dice Breaker team beyond just the tabletop. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest news, then you should also check out dicebreaker.com. But most importantly though, I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!